While construction of the Red Wings Arena continues, tonight we get a look at what Little Caesars Arena will look like on the inside. Until now, we've only seen the outside going up, but thanks to new virtual tours, we get a feel for what the new Red Wings experience will be like starting next year. Nick Monticelli takes us inside. For more than a year, a huge game changer for the Detroit Red Wings has been rapidly rising near Woodward and I-75. But it's still a little difficult to visualize exactly what all of this is going to look like. So this is a great shot of the 100 level concourse that you see. Until now, the Detroit Red Wings, Olympia Entertainment and specifically Molly Wardak are using virtual reality to let season ticket holders see what up until now they could only dream. The Wings are the first NHL team to use it and one of the first across all sports. We wanted to make sure that we had an opportunity to bring to life this new space. It's incredible to see what the future holds, like what's being called the Via Space, a huge atrium directly outside the bowl. In some places, almost three times as wide as the Joe Louis Arena Concourse experience. You want to check it out? I do. In this preview center, there's also virtual reality goggles. You can stand on center ice or check out the various clubs, like the Players Club, where the team will walk through. The visiting team will walk along the far side of the club. We don't want them anywhere near. <laughs> nope. Or we could let them come through and we'll trip them. Well, uh, well, we might be in trouble. <laughs> we might no longer have a club if that's the case. <laughs> If you look closely, you'll get glimpses into the differences between Joe Louis Arena and Little Caesars Arena. For instance, the Zamboni Tunnel used to be directly behind the visitor's net. Now it's off to the side. You can also get a feel for the pitch of the bowl. It's steeper, so even the higher seats will be closer to the ice. This is the entrance to the Red Wings locker room. And there it is, the Red Wings locker room with room for a 2017 Stanley Cup. You can also see exactly what your view will be from your seat. If you were to sit in section 122, row 8, this is your view from seat. My personally, this is what I get? It is. It's okay. what you get. <laughs> <laughs> With all the history, it's going to be tough saying goodbye to Joe Louis Arena. But one advantage to being one of the last new arenas is you can take the best from everyone else and then add to it. For instance, the mobile app. That's really going to help fans get from their home directly to their seat with the best directions, the best place and most available parking spots, the quickest entrances into the building, uh, the shortest concession and restroom lines, all those types of things from a technology experience. Those will be on your app. Those will be on your app. Yep, help to make the fan experience even better. In the District Detroit Preview Center, Nick Monticelli, Local 4. What a fabulous new home for the Red Wings. We have posted all of the virtual tours of the new arena at clickondetroit.com. Just go to the sports page. All right, here's what local Ford defender Karen Drew is working on for Tuesday night at 11. There's something going on at some of our local parks you probably didn't realize. When things break, you can't afford to replace it. That's right, a money shortfall causing some parks to start removing equipment. We remove swing sets, we remove you know, the monkey bars. And while some parks are being inspected to make sure they're safe for your kids, that's not the case for all parks. There's a challenge, there's no question about it. The defenders grab our hidden cameras and go looking for answers. What's going on at our parks, Tuesday at 11? We do still need some rain, so that would be great for maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. <laughs> right. But for Monday, we've got picnics, barbecues, parades, and fireworks. <laughs> Those need to stay dry. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, they certainly do, Steve, so that's some good news. Good. It's good you mentioned barbecues, too, because it's very important to still be careful when you're outside cooking. Make sure you extinguish those flames when you're done and never leave those fires unattended. Make sure you enjoy those good eats, too. We're looking at 79 for a high today. You know what? Temps tomorrow will be very similar. A few degrees shy of average, but hey, still warm enough at 79 to make it to the pool or beach. I think same thing for tomorrow. The record high today, 100. My goodness, set back in 1911. 68 degrees currently, a calm wind out there, relative humidity at 55%. We are in for a lovely night. Many folks getting up and heading out to Cedar Point. Boy, that's going to be busy tomorrow, right? Pack the rain gear or a poncho. There's a slight chance of an, uh, of an afternoon scattered shower or a thunderstorm, but nothing to wash out the day. Notice temperature similar to here. 
Low 70s by noon, 77 for a high by 4 p.m. over in Ohio. Outside right now, we're looking at temperatures starting off this evening, mostly in the 50s and 60s right now. Anywhere from 65 for our friends in Mount Clemens to 57 over in Port Huron. A little bit cooler there. Pinckney's at 61 degrees, and we'll see temperatures fall to the upper 50s and low 60s for the most part throughout Detroit and Southeast Michigan tonight. All the rain that is occurring here in the U.S., especially in parts of the Midwest, staying to our south. We have high pressure overhead. Look at the clear skies over the UP. More sunshine for tomorrow for them. Temperatures in the middle and upper 70s there. Around 80 degrees in places like Gaylord, also Alpena, over to Traverse City with mostly sunny skies. All that rain that's down to our south in the Ohio Valley, it's going to stay there. Look at the highs for today. While we were at 79 for a high, it was in the 90s in Montana, Utah, parts of Texas in the deep south. But all this hot air is just itching to get it into here into Detroit and southeast Michigan. It is summer after all, and that will be happening later on this week. And with that increased humidity, a better chance of rain. But not everyone gets a raindrop. I'll talk about that in a second. First, over the next 24 hours on these computer models, high pressure still remains in control overnight. You can see this area of low pressure in a funnel system to our south trying to make it in here. You can see a couple of light showers, maybe early tomorrow morning or